Hey everybody, welcome back. Now for those of you that's been keeping up with the issue that's going on down in Florida with fish and wildlife, if you've ever had any concern or curiosity about just how much impact you can have, we've got some updates to go into today that are going to shed a little bit of light on that and got some other information that's come out since the first video that we want to go over. Kind of just give everybody an update as to what's going on, what happened, and um, how we've managed to impact it so far. And my male Burmese python here, Apollo, is going to help us talk about that today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So the first thing that everybody needs to know is that ever since this has happened, Fish and Wildlife, the governor's office, everybody down in Florida has just been inundated with communications about this. There's form letters going out, there's people writing up their own feelings about this situation and sending it out to them. Email servers, you know, voicemails are clogging up down there and it's it's just been an overwhelming response um, in support of Chris Coffey down there and what happened to him. Now, since we put this first video out and you know we got a, a lot of people on board, a lot of people seeing it, and a lot of people reacting to it from across the country or from across the country and around the world. Um, you know, we've had messages come in from people in Denmark that have said, you know. I just saw this. I can't believe they did this. I went on and I got my U.S. ARC membership. You know, um, it, it's really awesome to see that kind of support coming in for this. Now, <clears throat> to clarify a little bit on what actually happened down there, for those of you that haven't really been keeping up with it, um, in the first video that I put out about it, I had mentioned that Fish and Wildlife came in there and killed this guy's whole collection. Now that was a misunderstanding on my part, and I've learned that as we um, <clears throat> as we learn more about it. I think he's you know still has some of his other animals down there, but um, what they focused on was his reticulated and his Burmese pythons, and of course they screwed up with the uh, pregnant boa down there as well. But <clears throat> the Fish and Wildlife has put out some uh, put out some messages saying that. Chris had given them permission to euthanize the animals. And it's, it's one of the ways that law enforcement can be really good at covering their ass. And this is a perfect example of that. Um, when you've got law enforcement knocking on your door and saying, you're gonna do this, or you're gonna sign this, or we're gonna arrest you and take you to jail right now, you're not giving them permission. You're being coerced into an end result that they are seeking and that's exactly what happened to him i've got um a copy of some messages that he had posted explaining what's going on and they're all posted right here so you guys feel free to pause the video and read these um to see what happened straight you know straight from the horse's mouth and let chris explain exactly what he'd, he'd been dealing with down there um which is really important to understand so they went in there under under false pretenses, essentially gave him an ultimatum, and proceeded to execute the animals that he had there, the reticulated and Burmese pythons. And again, like I said, if you're going in there giving somebody an ultimatum, you know, we're either going to arrest you and take you to jail and kill your animals, or you can just agree to us killing your animals. I mean, the guy's, the guy's kind of backed into a corner. There's nothing else he can do, but then that leaves fish and wildlife open to say well he gave us permission he said we could do it um you know we can we can all put ourselves in that position that's that's a tough call so since it's 80 degrees and 60 percent humidity down here in the reptile room i opted to bring out the lighter burmese python this is my little female she's just a baby but she's a lot easier to stand here and talk with except for the fact that she's all over the place 100 miles an hour now like i said all the activity that guys have been doing, you know, with the phone calls, the emails, everything else that's going on, the new memberships going into USARC Florida and the awareness, it's made a huge difference, but this is really, 
you know, this is far from over. We need to keep the pressure on. We need to keep working on these guys because, you know, this has been an ongoing thing. And just looking at Chris's story, he's not the only one down there that's had situations like this um, where people are having their freedom jeopardized um, when they're doing their best to stay within the confines of regulations that are being changed in the interests, not of the environment, not of the keepers, not of the American public, but of the land developers who are running the fish and wildlife down there, who are appointed by the governor, who can't be voted out, whose only interest is their own business interests. And these things need to be handled by science, they need to be handled by educated people, and the regulations that are in place, they need to be reasonable, they need to, you know, you've, you've got to have honest enforcement of it. Um, you know, I am far from anti-cop. My daughter is a police officer. And, you know, we've had discussions. There's a difference between taking actions in the spirit of the law and following the letter of the law. You know, there's, there, there's a discretion there where you've got to employ a little bit of humanity when you're working with people. Especially when people are trying to do the right thing and contacting you, trying to do the right thing. Uh, you do not do what those officers down in Florida did. So we definitely need to keep up the memberships for US ARC. I'll continue as, as I get more information from them about steps that they're taking. As I hear more about it, I'll put it out here. Uh, and as I said, I've always got all the links for the US ARC Florida. Um, US ARC Florida website is down there. You can get free memberships with them. You can just add to the numbers, which is a huge help. If you can contribute financially, do that as well. And keep the pressure on these guys. Keep up with what's going on because, you know, we're in a position where we can actually impact some of these things, impact some of these laws, and, you know, take the offensive on this. And don't forget, we've got to deal with this with a fair amount of decorum. Um, stay professional. Stay polite. Threats are unacceptable of any kind. Um, that is not how we resolve this. Uh, issues like this, they're resolved at the ballot box. And I don't care whether you lean left, whether you lean right, there is a portion of our country that is leaning heavily authoritarian. And this is not going to stop with reptiles. It's not going to stop with some of the other issues that are going on. Um, you know, you can be completely polarized politically and see laws get passed that ban this thing, that ban that thing. Sooner or later, guys, there's going to be a law passed that's going to ban something that you care about, and then it's going to be too late. So, you know, we've really got to work together. Put our differences as a reptile community aside. Like I said, left, right, your politics doesn't matter. It's a matter of right and wrong. And that's something that goes beyond what color you are. You know, whether black, white, red, blue, doesn't matter. Um, so, like I said, we've got, we've got the moral high ground on this one. We need to take advantage of it and use this as, as an opportunity to really start affecting some change and protecting, you know, our rights to keep these animals. You know, we've said it in the other video. These guys, I mean, these guys are my life. This is what I do. I go to work, I come home, and take care of the animals and do stuff like this because she's sweet. Look at you. So like I said guys, I'll put out some other information as I get it and you know, we'll get back on our uh, regular filming schedule here pretty soon finishing up the Nile Monitor series and whatnot, but yeah, you guys all know what you need to do get down in the description everything that you needs down there um, You know go back in the video read through what Chris had to say It's really important to hear firsthand what he's been dealing with down there and put yourself in his shoes so you guys have been rocking so far everybody appreciates all the help the support and we'll talk to you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.